So, um, so Rick, it's um, it's over to, over to you to talk about what I think is a very quick gulp of water before the have to talk. <laughs> um, to, um, talking about this um, fundamentals of citizen science course that the um, BDI is planning to run, and um, the chief presenters are going to be Ryan and Rick. And uh, so, Rick. Over to you and tell us about the uh, fundamentals of citizen science course. Thank you very much, Les. Thanks. And uh, yeah, hi to everyone. Lovely to see you all. And uh, good, uh, good to be back um, sharing this, uh, this, this forum and this platform with you. I'm just going to share my screen. Right. This is, uh, this is a, I, I think, a, a, a great idea that... Um, uh, has come about through discussions with um, with Les and various others from the BDI, and um, we thought that there was a, a wonderful opportunity for for us to present courses at some of the wonderful places that we've uh, we've been visiting and having bio bashes at. And um, so I'm just going to give you the yeah you know, the bare bones of uh, of the ideas behind uh, the courses that we plan to run on the fundamentals of citizen science. Um, why citizen science? Well, we believe that uh, citizen scientists, lay people, uh, like um, many of us involved in, uh, in this forum, can really make significant contributions towards uh, addressing the biodiversity issues that, that face us at, at present. Um, we all know, I think, uh, from seeing distribution maps presented in this forum and elsewhere that the results of work by citizen scientists enable the development of up-to-date distribution maps for species, um, distribution maps that would simply not be, uh, you know, possible if this was to be the, uh, you know, uh, uh, if we were to rely on uh, researchers getting out into the field. So uh, we were able to cover a lot more ground uh, with the assistance of citizen science, uh, citizen scientists. And then a very important uh, aspect is the fact that as citizen scientists, we are all responsible for uh, creating um, an increased public awareness uh, for biodiversity and the, particularly the role of biodiversity in our communities and particularly for, uh, from a point of view of the ecosystem services that are provided by the uh, biodiversity around us. And we coin this phrase that uh, we become ambassadors for biodiversity. And I think that's a wonderful sense of purpose for, uh, for all of us. And, you know, hence looking at, at um, presenting a course on, on the basis of citizen science. What is it? Uh, how do we go about it? How do we contribute? And uh, what are the outcomes of these contributions? And the picture that I've just put in there is... Uh, is what we can expect to experience at uh, the course which will be held at uh, the Karoo Harip Nature Reserve um, near, Kana uh, near, New Han near Hanover in, uh, in the Northern Cape. Um, a stunning uh, location, venue, with some amazing biodiversity to go with it. Right, well, um, how do we get involved? Well, by attending one of the week-long fundamentals of citizen science courses. Um, the discussions that we've had so far, um, we plan to run uh, the course initially uh, at three different locations across South Africa at different times of the year in 2021, depending on when biodiversity should be almost, if not at its richest. And, um, uh, the three places where we'll be uh, hosting these courses will be at Karoo Plains, where Ryan has just uh, shared wonderful uh, images and, and given us a lot of information about. That's the picture on the left, um, up there on the, on the uh, uh, border between Bushmanland and Upper Karoo. And then uh, across on the right is um, a picture taken at uh, Karoo Harip Nature Reserve, near Hanover, um, that's PC and Mariska Ferreira's place, new home, the guest farm. Um, also stunning, a stunning area with the most amazing vistas and 
uh, wonderful biodiversity. And then the third area that we'll be focusing on is uh, the area around Van Rainsdorp towards the west coast um, in uh, the sort of coastal region of Namakwaland and onto the Knatsflakte. Uh, this is a picture taken looking uh, sort of south uh, east from the Knatsflakte towards uh, a very well-known landmark near Van Rainsdorp called Gifberg, um, Poison Mountain, and named after the uh, specific uh, type of tree that grows only in this area apparently that has uh, has you know have poisonous properties so that's just a very uh, a very small little introduction to the venues that we propose to um, use for uh, the the at least three of the courses um, to be held during the course of 2021 what will we do um, well, the, the course will, of course, have um, theoretical and practical components, and um, we plan to, to spend as much time as we can putting theory into practice and getting out into the field and actually um, collecting um, biodiversity information. Uh, this is just a picture of uh, another very, very uh, avid citizen scientist Salomi Willemse here showing um, some other citizen scientists uh, some of the succulents on the Knash Fluctor. So, um, yeah, an important part of, of, of these uh, courses will be to spend time out in the field, getting to know the, the different taxa, the different animals and plants, um, and actually trying our hand at collecting the best possible biodiversity information that we can. Um, that can be used to, for example, um, contribute to drawing up detailed and up-to-date distribution maps of uh, different species. What will participants learn? Um, we'll be covering the major groups uh, of species and um, all of these that we'll be covering are included in the virtual museum. I'm um, sure so all of us, if not uh, most of us, are uh, aware of the virtual museum and uh, just some of the of the examples are reptiles, birds, mammals, um, odonata, dragonflies and damselflies, frogs, butterflies and moths, scorpions, spiders, lacewings and dung beetles and more. And uh, Ryan has uh, given a very good overview of some of the biodiversity that we can expect um, you know, at the uh, at at one of the venues, and of course, if we are going to find, you know, those groups in those venues, those locations, those are the ones that we'll be covering as well, um, specific to those areas. Um, of course, it's not only just learning about these particular groups, but also the role that they play in the environment, and the fact that they, um, many of them, are very good indicators of the quality of the environment. Um, so by um, learning about these and learning to identify them and record them, we are also contributing to the mapping of these very important indicators of the quality of the environment. Um, we'll learn basic biology and uh, particularly those aspects uh, which will assist us in finding uh, these animals and, and other taxa in the field um, in order to record them and to photograph them. We'll also be looking at techniques for photographing the taxa. And uh, of course, you know, in submission to the virtual museum, uh, those images that we take must ensure that the, that the animal or the plant uh, can be identified um, if possible down to species level. So the aspects relating to photography will look to you know, maximize the chance of getting that particular uh, animal or, or plant identified. And um, yeah, Ryan in particular has, uh, has got some great hacks for, uh, for finding and photographing uh, certain species, not only uh, in, the, in the best interests of the, of the species, but also from a, from a safe and, and, and ethical point of view. And this is just some of the, um, you know, some, covering some of the taxa um, uh, and, uh, and the garment there. 
Uh, here's an African wildcat photograph, sorry, the Agamid um, photographed at Karoo Plains uh, in near Carnarvon. This is an African wildcat photographed this last weekend down in the Karoo near um, Hanover. A black-eared sparrow lark, um, um, quite uh, nomadic birds of, uh, of the interior of the Northern Cape and which occur and breed at Karoo Plains. Uh, Namakwa sandgrass, another uh, very nice arid zone species that we find at both Karoo Plains and at uh, Karoo Kharip near Hanover. And then uh, this is uh, one of the beaked blind snakes also uh, that we found, that I found with Ryan uh, driving the, uh, the farm roads at night out uh, at Karoo Plains uh, and a beautiful giant juvenile giant ground gecko um, also found at Karoo Plains. We'll be looking at moths and butterflies as a beautiful um, emperor moth. I think it's called a zigzag emperor moth. And uh, yeah, um, Karoo Kharip Nature Reserve is, is fast becoming the place to go to see these uh, wonderful nocturnal mammals such as Artfark. And this was photographed a few weeks ago down there. Just a few others, uh, ground squirrels, some of the smaller mammals. We'd be looking at Odonata. This is a female red vein dropwing. And then uh, spiders as well. This is a nice baboon spider, uh, also photographed uh, up at Karoo Plains. Uh, I've mentioned the fact that by contributing uh, to citizen science, um, we become ambassadors for biodiversity. And, you know, we'll be talking from our personal experience and experience of, of others at how to improve our skills in um, being ambassadors for biodiversity. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's just by um, telling people some quite basic information, for example, how many bird species are found in their neighborhood. Many, many times people are totally unaware of this. Um, so we, we all have an important responsibility. And as I said, we'll, we'll, we'll be sharing from our own experiences, um, you know, how one can go about this. Um, I also mentioned earlier that the, we, we need to emphasize the important role uh, that biodiversity plays in ensuring our survival uh, on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of the ecological services that they provide, provide. and uh, and they provide them for free. And uh, you know, one we can think of is, is pollination um, by by insects, uh, and also to a much less extent by birds. And um, yeah, with uh, without that, um, you know, there are issues relating to food security and so on. Um, so we need to um, develop informal strategies to uh, to really, uh, you know, communicate whenever we can with people about the importance of our biodiversity. So all of these things will be covered as well. Um, a typical day. Um, well, depending on where we are, we will adapt the, uh, the day to fit what we're going to be covering on that particular day. Um, we'll always look at spending the best times of the day in the, in the field. Um, and that's, of course, early morning. And that'll usually be followed by a latest breakfast. And then the, the theory, um, the theoretical aspects will be covered uh, during the downtime in the middle of the day. Um, we'll also then have time to, to, to just take time off and have uh, some leisure time and then we'll we'll have informal discussions um, both I'm sure during the days but also um, particularly after supper and uh, but depending on what groups we uh, will be focusing on on a particular day the schedule for that day might uh, might change if we're looking at scorpions for example we'll need to go out in the evening to look for them so the practical session will be in the in the evening but there's quite a bit of flexibility built into this. Um, but the days will be filled with, uh, with just spending time getting to know and studying and documenting the biodiversity around us. And uh, how, how does one apply? Um, we are preaching pretty much to the converted, I know, on this forum, but um, if we will be advertising and um, uh, the, um, 
template that Les sent to me, um, there was no one mentioned to send an email to. So I put Megan's, uh, Megan's email in. I hope I've got the bdi.org.za. It might be different. Um, sorry about that, Les. But perhaps in the discussion, which we'll have right now, we can, uh, we can just talk about how we're going to advertise uh, and um, who people need to contact if they're interested in attending any of these courses. And of course, getting all the all the details, all the information about dates and costs and things like that. Um, pictured here is a large build lock. Um, just check, looking skywards. And then I had one of the, one of the most amazing sightings uh, this last weekend down in Karoo. Uh, a a bat-haired fox trotted off, trotted into the road in front of the vehicle on a, on a night drive, followed by three little pups. And um, and uh and the pups hung around and came back towards the vehicle and had, we had some wonderful photo opportunities so in a in a nutshell then um that's the fundamentals of citizen science uh, course uh under the auspices of the bdi um which we are kicking off in the in the new year and yeah i hope it will be well supported and um we'll be looking at accommodating 10 people for a total of seven days at a time um, and we think that will um, you know be, be optimal for Hello. Uh, the, 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 the load that we have and okay. uh, for getting the work That's done. Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay, thanks, um, thanks Rick. Are there, um, are there, are there questions uh, for Rick? Maybe questions for um, for me as um, as well. Yeah, I, uh, Les, I, I've got one. Um, just get my wife to turn the television down, please, dear. In the background. Um, thanks, Rick. That's that's great, and it's a, it's a great uh, it's a great initiative. And funnily enough, I, I really wanted to listen tonight because I, I just literally tonight, as I walked in tonight, I got uh, a copy of the Salka um, um, report. Uh, that was run by um, by Silver Nero and all the people from Lebsock, uh, where they and the findings are really scary as to as to the sort of uh, the loss of of Lepidoptera biodiversity we've had in in the sort of seven well no the five years between the original Sabka project and uh, and the new Salka project and one of the one of the points it makes is it compares Salka and Sabka with what's been happening in in the UK. With the butterfly conservations, citizen science projects, and they have, in terms of the number of citizen scientists taking part, if you look at the number of, of people per, per taxon, it's over over a hundred times as many people per taxon because they've got like, thousands of citizen scientists chasing after 50, 59 species of butterfly. In South Africa, we've got a few, I don't know, dozen, maybe a couple of hundred at most, chasing after. 806 taxa of butterfly, never mentioned moths. And, uh, and I looked at this and I thought that is a fantastic message being given across to the BDI. You know, how, do we, how do we fix that? How do we build capacity to the point where we can have the same, anything like the same uh, amount of commitment by people? Um, birders have got close to it with, with, um, you know, with, the, with all, all the things that are going with birding, birding, big day and uh, and uh, bird lasso and all those other things. But with, with butterflies and moths, and, and, that, and they are one of the most heavily studied ones. If you look at things like spiders and scorpions, it's even even bigger problem. And, you know, when it comes to building capacity and getting numbers of people involved and, and building systems that allow them to, to record their data um, and, uh, and understand what it is they're seeing and, and, uh, and also to identify what they're looking at, then I think this is a, a big message. I'm going to. I said to them as soon as I can. I want to send that report out to all the all the people in the BDI. I don't know, if, Les. Have you seen the the the, the, um, uh, the, the, initial, the initial report? The first draft came out tonight. No, I've not seen it yet. I'd love to see it. Yeah, it's it's an important document. It really is. I, I mean, they, they had the the summary in the in in the, in the recent Sandy um, Journal, but it only had the summary, and that just scratched the surface. This has gone into it in real depth, and and, uh, and there's some scary stuff in there. But I think also there's some there's some pointers where we need to go in future.
yeah, that's imp uh, that's important stuff. There's a real need for um, for this uh, sort of communication training and that sort of thing. So so uh, you know we're not going to uh, we're not going to in on ourselves get South Africa up or Africa up to um, European standards, but we can we can make a start, and that's what we plan to do. Definitely, yeah. Gives us, it gives us it gives us a sort of a what's the word a, a lodestar. Um, we won't be able to do it exactly the same way they do it. And one of the points that's made is that a, a large proportion of the citizen scientists working over there have got tertiary education. You yeah. um, know, here not the case. Um, you got the people like Les and myself and a few others and Nick and Rick who have done tertiary education, but the great number of people who are out there have done no um, you know formal education on the on biology even so you know just simply to I think what what you've been talking about now with the with the, uh, with the BDI um, you know um, sessions around the country that's a great initiative it couldn't be it couldn't be a better time really thanks Steve for that uh, encouragement um, so so where we go from now from yeah and and, and uh, Megan has put her uh, her um, corrected um, email address, so megan at megan at the bdi dot org. So, I don't, so sorry, Rick, for not communicating that to you uh, properly. I don't know how we I don't know how we change it in the video. <laughs> it might be quite difficult <laughs> edit the video, but uh, but um, you know that that's what we um, what what we need to do. So. Um, I, I've got the, the date sitting here with me, but tomorrow, when the, or to, the day after, when um, the uh, the video goes onto YouTube, we'll have a little uh, a paragraph which has got um, um, the, the, the the three dates which are planned in uh, February, April, and August next year for the um, for the initial um, uh, courses. There's a um, there's a possibility of going to um, if we, if we can travel safely of actually going to um, Colin Jackson's place on the coast of uh, Kenya. That would be amazing and I'm sure people would love to do that. Um, so uh, so we've got, uh, we've got uh, big plans for, um, for next year. Um, so we've got three courses uh, sort of planned at the moment, but, uh, but we, will, we will do a lot more if, uh, if, if the demand, uh, demand for them is, uh, is good. Right. Thank you, Rick. Are there any questions specifically aimed at um, at Rick? And have you a look at the chat. And there's there's one on on the on the price uh, for the courses. Um, have we managed to finalise those yet, or are we still trying to just refine the details? And we'll I, make I, that I, information I, available. Yeah. I think I think that that information will go into the um, into the video. It um, it's going to be almost exactly eleven thousand rand for the seven day course, and um, well, what that includes is um, is is two. Um, um, I don't know how you describe yourselves, Rick and Ryan, lecturers, facilitators, facilitators, <laughs> two facilitators. And there will be uh, two people in old-fashioned terms would be called teaching assistants as well. So there's ten people and um, and and four people effectively uh, uh, leading it. So we've we've decided to actually go for quite a um, a good you know uh, in in academic to staff student uh, ratio. Yeah, 